Hi, I'm Alexa, the hardware designer behind Thunderscope, and I recently had some very good conversations about documentation in open source, and realized that the most difficult part of the project should probably be the most documented part, lest it just becomes a black box people put into their design. And that's not what I want to happen. I really want to see Thunderscope become like a rip wrap where people build on it, kind of make their own versions of it, expand its capability, and eventually I want to see open source become one of the default choices like it is with 3D printers. So let's begin. Why front end? <laughs> now, we get a lot of different voltages at the input, which is this BNC here. And they span from, in this design, 40 volts, peak to peak, down to something like, uh, oh, there we go. It's eight millivolts. So eight millivolts, peak to peak. Yeah, so it's a pretty wide range. But the problem we have is the ADC over here only has one range. That is two volts peak to peak. So we need to make sure that any voltage within this range can be scaled down to, or up actually, to two volts peak to peak. So first of all, let's tackle that scale down. So we need gain and attenuation, attenuation being scaling down the voltage. So that upper range, 40 volts peak to peak needs to come down. But what does it need to come down to? So in this design, the gating factor is not actually this two volts peak to peak, it's this chip over here. It's a pro programmable gain amplifier, the LMH6518. And it's a fantastic chip. It's pretty much made for this purpose. It has built in um, bandwidth limiting filters for uh, anti-aliasing. Uh, and it has a whole bunch of different gain options that are super useful for an oscilloscope. The problem is it does not like to output anything uh, more than uh, seven, sorry, 0. 0.7 volts peak to peak. So that's already a bit of a problem because our ADC expects two. Luckily enough, this ADC has a trick up its sleeve. It has a uh, digital gain. Now, how does it have digital gain? Well, it actually has 13 bits of resolution here. And we are using it as either an 8-bit converter or 12-bit converter. With the 12-bit converter, we're going to eat a little bit into those 12 bits. But as we'll talk about later, you never really get 12 bits. Uh, it's a figure called ENOB, or uh, effective number of bits. And even for the latest, greatest 12-bit scopes, that number tends to be pretty low. Like sometimes it goes down to eight bits. Sometimes it goes down to nine. And if you're asking what your eight bit scope goes down to, <laughs> it's not very good. So moving back to this, we can digitally gain up to 2V uh, PP. So that solves that problem. The other problem is the input voltage here is that's 0 0.7 volts peak to peak. We look at the minimum gain that this thing has, which is uh, times 0 0.875. 0 0.8 here. And then this buffer here, we're gonna talk about this whole circuit later, but this is essentially uh, times one gain. 
So you need 0 0.8 here. So 40 volts peak to peak needs to come down to 0.8 volts peak to peak. So that gives us a 50x attenuation factor or in gain, that looks like 0 0.02. So that's this path right here. The other path here is uh, just times one if you don't want that attenuation. And that's for all the voltages down here that we will just need to gain up directly. Now, if it's not at 40 volts peak to peak exactly, we are actually going to attenuate it and then gain it up again. Now, that sounds like a waste, but it's a lot nicer to have just these two relays up here instead of a whole bunch of relays for uh, attenuation. Uh, much easier to gain things up than attenuate them out here. Um, now on to this second part. That's also an attenuator. Uh, it's just on a different path. So this 1x path can lead here, which is also essentially just 1x, or for 50 ohm mode here, 50 ohm, it actually gets divided down by 5. So that's actually a 5x attenuator or 0 0.2 in gain. We have a 5x five, five attenuation path here and a 1x here. Uh, this path here is never going to combine with that path. So yeah, um, for the 5x path, that 40 volts peak to peak maximum input actually just becomes 4 volts peak to peak. So I may change this to a 10x, but the sacrifice here is essentially, I want to get a good 50 ohm mode with just the use of one additional relay. And you can't really do that without putting an attenuator here to present 50 ohm to the input and also scale down the, the voltage. So by increasing this attenuator, you gain voltage range up here, but then you lose range down there because, uh, if you have a very small sensitive signal, you are still attenuating it. So this is a bit of a trade-off, uh, but it does provide a very good frequency response uh, in 50 ohm mode because it looks very much like 50 ohms, uh, which is what it should. Uh, we'll talk about frequency response later. Uh, this is supposed to be a view of just the gain and attenuation for now. So I mentioned this 1x gain and this programmable gain amplifier, we talked about what the minimum is uh, in the case of 40 volts peak to peak, but uh, eight millivolts peak to peak, well, we're just gonna travel down the one X, one X, one X, and then that's gonna live right here at the input, eight millivolts peak to peak. And we want this fairly consistent 0.7 volts peak to peak because that's the maximum this thing will be comfortable outputting. So the gain for that ends up being the maximum for this part. Because again, it was made for scopes. So a lot of these numbers just ended up working pretty well. Uh, so that would be 87.1 X gain. Uh, and then of course that output goes into the ADC and the ADC is programmed with a 2.8 X gain. To show you the gain in action, I've connected a function generator set to one megahertz at 20 volts peak to peak to the Thunderscope, which is connected to my computer by Thunderbolt. Okay, so let's boot up the Thunderscope. We're gonna run the program ts.net uh, engine, which is written by uh, Mark from the UK. This basically will stream all the data from the Thunderscope onto the computer's uh, memory. And then it's going to use the CPU to trigger all that uh, in real time at one gigabyte per second, which you can see right here. And then that's going to actually hand the triggered data over to ng scope client, which is a project by Andrew Zunberg. And it has a lot of really beefy GPU acceleration. 
to make drawing these waveforms just delightful. Um, this is way too low of a range, so we're going to first set the attenuation to 1 because we're piping in the signal direct, and then we are going to change this to something more suitable for a 20 volt peak to peak signal, so let's say 25. All right, then we need a measurement. Peak to peak summary. 18.86 volts. So that is not the 20 volts we're expecting. Why? Well, we often say nobody's perfect, but we rarely extend this courtesy to our circuits. Fact of the matter is all of these things have a tolerance associated with them. So this attenuator is made up of 1% resistors and 1% capacitors. So it has a tolerance of 2%. Now, <laughs> this isn't just the percentages added together. You have to do some math for this. Um, like with this one, also 1% resistors, but it actually turns out to be plus minus 1.6%. Now for the buffer, it seems like easy enough. It's a 1x buffer. Well, it's not quite 1x. So this actually has tolerance starting with minus 2% and going down to minus 5%. And we'll talk about this cheeky little op amp in another video. Now for the PGA, it has a tolerance of plus minus 8.4%, pretty much across the board. And even the ADC has a gain tolerance of plus minus 6%. So in total, we actually have a very, very loose tolerance of 14.4% positive and negative 21.4%. So where does that leave us with our 18.8 volts, well, that is 18.8 volts over 20 volts. So do some mental math there. 9.4 over 10. Uh, yeah, that's minus six percent which is well within what we expect now if we wanted to get rid of that we would have to calibrate it and the way we would do that is we connect just like what we did a known uh, input and we basically just start tweaking the gains until we get what we want um, or you can just change what we define as the voltage. So we can just say, okay, the gain is actually that. Um, but by tweaking the gain, you can get more uh, out of the ADC instead of just kind of redefining what the range is. And that's it uh, for gain and attenuation. There are going to be many more parts of this series because there's a lot to think about in a oscilloscope front end, but I hope that was informative. Thanks.